Hey everybody, not poolside chat number six. We are still in Mind Gym by Gary Mack. Uh, this talk is gonna talk about good enough to dream, progress not perfection, don't shirk the work, and fatal distractions. Good enough to dream. You must have dreams and goals if you are ever going to achieve anything in this world. Lou Holtz. So Gary Mack, the author, he worked with football teams, baseball teams, and he does anecdotes from all of them. So he talks about every major league team can judge a prospect's tools, and there are five in baseball. The ability to hit, hit with power, run, catch, and throw. But how do you measure what's inside an athlete's head and heart? So he worked with the Cubs at the time, and he was their new counselor. And at spring training, he would interview players and give a psychological analysis to go along with their physical analysis. So he would have them all come into his hotel room. He would ask them questions and then give a report to the managers and coaches. Tell me, I asked for openers, where do you see yourself in three or four years? That's the usual timeline for baseball players to make it to the major leagues. Some kids shrugged. They didn't see past tomorrow. Some hadn't thought that far ahead. Most didn't have a clear definition of where they wanted to be or what they wanted to do. Asked what motivated him, one player said, candidly, the Ford factory in Toledo. He knew he didn't want to be punching a time card there. So basically, they're thinking about what they want to avoid, not what they want, right? Which is what we've talked about several times now. Then Dwight Smith strolled in. I can't remember for sure what he was wearing, t-shirt and shorts, I think. When I asked Dwight his vision for the future, the young man who wasn't a high school who wasn't a high round draft choice, didn't hesitate. Mac, I see myself in Wrigley Field hitting 300, he said. This kid from rural South Carolina pictured himself starting in the outfield. He even saw and heard himself singing the national anthem. Dwight Smith saw his tomorrow in vivid color. As I listened, my skin broke out in goosebumps. I was struck by his confidence and moved by the power of his dream. Some people are PSO, positive sensory oriented. Others are negative sensory oriented. Positive sensory oriented people like Dwight have a very vivid imagination and sensory rich dreams. Wade Boggs at age six knew he would someday play in the major leagues. Johnny Bench's second grade teacher asked her students what they wanted to be when they grew up. Bench said he wanted to be a baseball player. His classmates laughed. In the eighth grade, he was asked the same question. I said a baseball player and they laughed a little more, Bench recalls. By the 11th grade, no one was laughing. An acronym for setting goals is SMART. The S stands for specific, which could be, I wanna get better at butterfly. A specific goal is something that you can nail down the other parts of SMART within that. So you wanna get better at butterfly. So M is for measurable, which means I'm going to do six kickouts off every wall. I'm going to breathe before I initiate my pull and I'm going to do two kicks per stroke. Those are all very measurable. The A stands for achievable. So it's reachable and within your control. So you might have to edit the first part to say, I'll do this the first half of practice before I get tired, or I'll work on one of those things at a time. T stands for time bound. There is a, an accomplishment date. So by a certain meet, a certain month, you're gonna be doing those things. A goal is a dream with a timeline. Every goal needs a target date for completion. I encourage athletes to set daily or short-term goals. The way to achieve long-term goals is to break them down into small steps. The old saying is, inch by inch, it's a cinch. Two of our greatest fears are the fear of being out of control and the fear of the unknown. Setting and attaining small goals provided that you do it the correct way, smart goals, uh, give positive feedback and motivation to get better. And as you do this, your confidence will improve. You should be looking for progress, not perfection. What do you want to accomplish in sports? The magic begins when you set goals. What are your goals? Make a list, write them down. This is the first step to putting your dreams into action and turning them into a reality. Goals are dreams with timelines. Turn your vision into action with goal setting. Seek progress rather than perfection. 
So homework for this chapter is, what do you want to accomplish in sports? What are your goals? And write them down. Make them smart. Next chapter, don't shirk the work. Shirk is a weird word. I don't know how many times I've seen that written. Talent is never enough. With few exceptions, the best players are the hardest workers. Magic Johnson. The harder you work, the harder it is to surrender. Vince Lombardi. We all want to win. Every athlete wants to succeed, but the ones who do are, the one, are those who separate wanting from being willing to make the sacrifice that winning demands. I could look into players' eyes, observe their body language, and tell which ones were determined to pay the price to make their dreams come true. One of those players was Ricky Prohl. I met Ricky in 1990 after his senior season at Wake Forest. He attended the NFL scouting combine in Indianapolis. So basically he goes through and talks about how Ricky is a lot smaller than most people are used to. He's not an NFL prototype but he led Wake Forest in receiving three years in a row. He set the school record for career receptions. He saw himself playing in the NFL, just as Dwight Smith saw himself wearing a Cubs uniform in Wrigley Field. Other prospects who had competed against Ricky in the ACC offered testimonials to his work ethic. Ricky, he comes at you play after play. He runs perfect routes. The guy's a fighter, he never quits. I hope the Cardinals would draft him and they did in their third round. So here's the first homework question of this chapter. If someone interviewed your teammates, what would they say about you? Write it down. If someone interviewed your teammates, what would they say about you in practice and at meets? So Ricky went on uh, 10 years later, late in the fourth quarter of the NFC championship game, he scored the, or he threw the touchdown that won the game and put him on the cover of Sports Illustrated. The kid from Wake Forest traded by the Cardinals to a losing team in Seattle and then to a bad team in Chicago and later to a 412 team in St. Louis took a lap around the Trans World Dome because they were going to go to the Super Bowl based on that catch. So the idea is that Ricky was small, he wasn't phenomenal, but he envisioned himself doing it and he did it. And he enrolled everybody around him into believing that he could do it. And he was a good teammate, he was a good person, he worked hard, he did everything he had to do, and he accomplished his goal. And then it still didn't go perfectly, right? He went from team to team, a lot of his teams were losing, and he just kept at it. And then eventually, he made it to the Super Bowl in the cover of Sports Illustrated and and accomplished everything he wanted to. You know, I assume. I'm not sure exactly what his long-term plan was, but you get the point. Okay, Lars Anders at the University of Florida, writing in a paper on deliberate practice, said he found it takes 10 years of practice to acquire the mastery of an expert. Ricky had been catching footballs for a long time but it took him 10 years of hard work to become an overnight success, right? You guys only see the end. Don't compare your beginning to someone else's end. Don't compare your middle to someone else's end. Kids that it's your first year swimming and you're 10 years old, you can't compare your swimming to a 10 year old that started swimming five years ago, or you shouldn't. In sports, as in life, there is no substitute for commitment. Vince Lombardi called it heart power. A man can be as great as he wants to be, the Hall of Fame coach said. If you believe in yourself and have the courage, the determination, the dedication, the competitive drive, and if you are willing to sacrifice the little things in life and pay the price for the things that are worthwhile, it can be done. Once a man has made a commitment, he puts the greatest strength in the world behind him. It's something we call heart power. Once a man has made this commitment, nothing will stop him short of success. That's a very powerful quote. Because when you think about the fact that once you commit to something, you're going to do it no matter what. 
That's a big thing to say and to follow through on and to expect of yourself. And it's how you're going to be successful in sports and school and relationships and in life is being able to commit to something and follow through. And then he named five things. Believe in yourself, courage, determination, dedication, competitive drive, willing to sacrifice, and willing to pay a price. So you guys already know what it is to sacrifice. Lizzie just made the Nova South bingo and it talks about who has had to say, sorry, I can't, I have swim practice. It's okay to sacrifice for something big. It's okay to want something more and to understand that you're not gonna be able to do every little thing that comes up. It's okay to sacrifice sleep and social. And I mean, Big time people sacrifice everything. They sacrifice time with their families. They sacrifice whatever it takes to make it happen. Figure out what you want to commit to and what that means. And then you won't resent what you're having to sacrifice for it. Okay. It's easy to cheat yourself and do just enough to get by. But that's what everybody can do. Just enough to get by. But those who want to be successful and maintain that level of success have got to push a little bit harder and do a little bit more. Rod Carew says he has seen many baseball players blessed with God-given ability who simply don't want to work. They are soon gone. I've seen others with no ability to speak of who have stayed in the big leagues for 14 or 15 years. You have to want to do the work. Andre Agassi fell from the top of the tennis world to number 141 in the rankings. Determined to resurrect his career, he committed to the belief that if he worked himself into top physical shape, no one could beat him. You have to work hard and establish yourself all over again or else it's really easy to have a bad day. Watching him during his inspiring comeback, you could see Agassi was willing to stay out on the court for as long as he had to beat his chief rival, Pete Sampras. So you guys see this and I see this all the time. People that have talent but don't work hard. And you know, like this says, they are soon gone. It's hard to make it on just talent. You have to learn to work hard. And the people that work hard at some point will pass the talent, don't work hard people. How about you? Have you made a commitment? Hmm? Has anybody listening to these chats made a commitment? Because pretty much every chapter has asked you to set a goal or commit to something. Results come only after you cross that line and say you're going to answer the questions and do the exercises. Mental skills like physical skills only improve if you do the work. One of my favorite quotes is from former tennis great player Bjorn Bjorg. It's quite a name. I remember how I used to take the train to Stockholm every day after school to play. Coming home late, studying, getting up to go to school, getting on the train again, all those years. It has gotten results, but even if it hadn't, even if I wasn't able to become a champion, I would still know that I gave it my best shot. I tried, I got on the train, and I tried. Have you boarded the train? Are you on track? If not, what are you waiting for? It takes years of hard work to become an overnight success. Are you willing to make the commitment and pay the price? That's your homework, that question. Have you done the questions and exercises? And then what is your commitment and are you willing to pay the price? Okay, last chapter, fatal distractions. Obstacles are what you see when you take your eyes off your goal. Reggie Jackson. As we talked about in the previous section on goal setting, whatever your age and whatever your game, you need to focus your time and energy if you want to become successful and realize your dreams. One key to reaching your full potential as a person and an athlete is to avoid those distractions that can lead you away from your goals. Follow your goals and not the crowd. Former Olympic swimming champion Janet Evans said, sometimes I feel envious when my friends go to parties and I have to go to bed but my friends always tell me that the parties really aren't that much fun anyway. Whatever I've missed, I've made up for. Most kids don't get to go to the Olympics and win three gold medals. It's definitely been worth it. 
As a teenager, basketball star Kevin Johnson went to the gym every evening to practice. One evening, the janitor said to him, Kevin, it's Saturday night. Why aren't you out at parties like everybody else? Parties, Johnson replied, won't take me where I want to go. I love that. Associate with people who make you better. Think about that. Who in your life is making you better right now? Thank them for it and then keep spending time with them. If you're the smartest person in the room, find a new room. What you find depends on where you look. Stay focused on your goals and avoid the fatal distractions. Say yes to your dreams and no to anything that deters you from them. Okay, homework from this is, how are you staying focused? What do you tend to be distracted by? How could you combat that distraction? Okay, so how are you staying focused? What do you tend to be distracted by? How can you combat that distraction? All right, that's a wrap. Number six, see you guys later.